What's going on, family? Your welding coach, Black Phoenix, checking in. And today, I wanted to talk to you about a D1.5 weld test with a 7018 rod, a one inch coupon. Now, this is a bridge welding test. If you're doing bridge construction and you're doing a lot of repairs and things on bridges, they require you to have one cert, and that is a 3G, one inch coupon, all the way out 7018. Now, when you're taking this test, family, I want you to know the things you can use. You can only use your light to make sure you can see real good, but you wanna make sure you, uh, your plate is clean every time before you place a new bead in. You can use your chipping hammer, your wire brush, and a scraper right here. I call this a scraper. You're gonna use this to clean right beside the well. You wanna make sure ain't no slag in those crevices at all because this is all you can use this is your power and your muscle is all you can use on this test now if you pass this test normally you'll make a lot more so they have some welders here starting out between 25 to 30 dollars an hour depends on uh, their experience level and how they do on the test uh, they start them from 25 to 30 dollars an hour now that's good money now we do know bridge construction got to deal with the elements and you might travel or be in one area one time so if that's something that you're thinking about this is something you have to prepare for so what i want to do is i'm gonna run i'm gonna run a few beads but um, i had a student come in today that was practicing and he had a couple errors so i cleaned it out with the grinder now you can't use the grinder on this test but this is a practice coupon, so I kind of wanted to get it started back so he can get back in to fill the plate out. The roof pass is very critical in this. You want to take your time, family. Normally, you're going to use about two rods to put this roof pass in. You want to start at the bottom of your runoff tab and go on and get your motion going. And you probably make it close to the middle or maybe above on the plate. And then you're going to have to tie in and come all the way back out. That's going to be the critical well. So you want to make sure you hesitate on both sides and another thing you want to do use the eighth inch rod so you want to go up on this side wall about an eighth inch on both sides you want to crawl up on the side of a wall to hesitate about an eighth inch and hesitate and crawl on the other side about an eighth inch and hesitate now once you get your root pass in and you get your hot pass in if you're going to run a root pass and a hot pass then you can just run stringers all the way out and that'll be the easiest thing so i would run a weave uh, pretty much to tie it in a small weave on top of the hot pass I mean on top of the root pass for your hot pass and then I'll start stringling all the way out so what I'm going to do I'm going to take my time and I'm going to put in the hot pass in here and that way when he, have, when he falls back in it he's going to be putting his stringers in so just keep this in mind when you're doing this test no power tools be patient, don't get frustrated, and just remember the basic principles on travel speed, uh, your gap, and your angle. All of that is gonna help you do this, and it's just gonna be time consuming, so um, try not to get the plate too hot. So you know how sometimes you go, you, you're going back and back in it, back in it, back in it. Give it some time between each wells to kind of cool just a little bit. You don't want it to cool all the way down, but you don't want it as hot because you can have some fallout if you keep dabbing back in it and the metal gets too hot. So allow the metal to cool properly, clean it up real good, make sure the stuff is good, and that should be plenty of time for it to uh, cool down. So I'm gonna dive into it. We're using 7018 rods, eighth inch, and that way we can actually cover a lot of ground while we're doing this. So I'm gonna dive into it, family. Let's go. I'm burning about 108 amps. I don't like burning real, real hot going up here because the plate is going to get hot itself. So if I get at a good temperature, uh, the plate is actually going to get a little bit hotter, so I still be fine. But I don't like to change the settings 
I like to keep it at one setting and, and just go from there. So I try to find where it's, it's good and it's tying in good and striking. And then I just work it. As you see, I made it about a little over the center of the plate. So that's about, that's about normal, that's about good. And I was hesitating on both sides. We're not gonna use any grinding wheels or nothing like that. We wanna act like this is a real test, so I'm just gonna use what I got. So normally when I start and I'm, and I'm welding, I don't take out all the slag off, I just, take the slag off and where I'm gonna be welding at, and then I remove everything once I get, before I get ready to place the next bead in. Make sure you get it out. So I always like to make sure I clean and get whatever I see inside of it. You want to make sure you get all of that out of there. So I'm going to dive back into it and then i come up closer to show y'all how I did on this person, on this uh, high pass. And just a rule of thumb, always come out on your running tab. Start on your running tab, end on your running tab. That way you don't have no error of messing anything up. Even though we know that when they test this, this first inch from here to here is gonna get cut out and they're not gonna use that. But this next inch is what they're gonna use for your uh, front bend and then they're gonna come from the bottom and come an inch, they're gonna get rid of that, and they're gonna use that next inch for your root. So they have one, one face and one root in. Running now. 
Oh, that's good. So one little piece, a slab way here at the top. And actually, that little piece that I seen was actually going to be in the zone that wouldn't be tested. So I'm gonna just see this root. And actually this is the high pass on top of the root. He had actually did it. And now all you really wanna focus on is your string of beads. You run around string of beads here and start bringing them over or, or right to left and start bringing them over. And that's how you do this test. That'll be the most easiest way to accomplish this. That'd be the most easiest way to accomplish this well. It's just to start running stringers. So I'm gonna run one stringer all the way up. And now when you start running your stringers, you do not want to stop. So just keep that in mind. You want to limit your tie-ins. You want your tie-ins only to be when you're putting in your roof or your hot pads. That's it. The rest of your tie-ins, you want it to be once you finish. You want to start here and make sure you finish here and keep running them like that because the less tie-ins gonna be the less mistakes or the less errors you might have while you're testing and you're working on this. I'm gonna run one stringer up the side and I'm gonna call it quits, fam, so that my guy can come in tomorrow and me and him will finish this together. And you see, I took my time and really put that rod in there because this is a one inch tree pump. So you don't want to go too fast where you'll be running beads forever. You want to take that one bead, that one rod, and I would say at least take your time where you can burn them down close to the numbers on this one pad. Because this normal this tree pump is going to be from six to seven inches long. So that way you can finish it with one bead. But that gives you the opportunity to really put some well in there. Make sure you ain't got nothing down the side. Put your light on so you can see it real good. That's tied in, it ain't got no holes in it. And next you're gonna hit the next one. I'm gonna bring it in so you can see it. See, we got a good bead there. And the next goal is to come in on the other side and start tying in. So, just wanted to give some pointers, a couple tips to those who will be doing a D1 point, uh, a D1.1 point, a D1.5 test, sorry. So that's just a few tips. Like I say, this is just for bridge welding construction. So you got D1.1 for regular construction, and then you got D1.5 for bridge construction. Hold on. <laughs> 